The movie kicks off with a young guy named Eric. He's having a big argument with his buddy, and out of the blue, he starts pummeling his friend. All his other pals are just standing there, not daring to step in because Eric's got a reputation for getting into fights. Then the principal calls Eric in because he's had enough of Eric's bad behavior. Bam. Eric gets expelled from school right on the spot. When Eric gets back home, there's more trouble waiting for him. His stepdad is going to give him a caning for causing that big fight and getting kicked out of school. His real mom knows all about it, but doesn't really care. She figures Eric needs to learn from his mistakes, so she lets the caning happen. Later on, his mom asked him to meet up with her friend Gunnar, who happens to be a lawyer. Gunnar handed Eric his business card and said, if he ever runs into any kind of trouble, just give him a call. Eric, feeling a bit puzzled, just stared at the business card. Once Gunnar left, Eric's mom expressed her disappointment about him getting kicked out of school. Then she dropped a bombshell. She'd enrolled Eric in a new school. It's called Starnsburg, an all-boys boarding school. She really hopes Eric won't blow this chance and tells him firmly that it's his last shot. Eric understood and promised his mom that he'd do well in school, graduate, and not let her down. Eric rolled up to his new school, this time decked out in a uniform with a fresh short haircut. His roommate turned out to be Pierre, the brainiac of the school. They had a chat and hit it off right away, because Pierre was a friendly dude. When evening came, Eric and Pierre headed to the dining hall. That's where Eric met Johan, a fellow student. Johan spilled the beans that each school has its own traditions, and in this one, they treat students based on their social status. Right after Johan said that, the student next to Eric got summoned by two other guys at the end of the table, Otto and Gustav. The poor student who got called over came from a regular family, while Otto and Gustav were high-class nobles. Now, Otto and Gustav, being from noble families, loved picking on students from ordinary backgrounds, like the guy next to Eric. They acted all high and mighty, because their families had a ton of influence in the school, and they weren't scared of getting expelled. Plus, they were part of an inside school club that gave them power to punish other students. After dinner, Pierre asked Eric if he wanted to sneak in a quick smoke. At first, Eric said no because he promised his mom he wouldn't break any rules. Johan chimed in, warning that they'd get in big trouble if they got caught smoking. But Pierre was pretty confident they could pull it off without getting caught, and that finally convinced Eric. The next morning during breakfast, Otto and Gustav called Eric over. They said it was a welcome thing for transfer students and wanted to school him on the traditions. But Eric straight up refused. His refusal meant Johan had to pay the price. Otto hurt Johan pretty bad, to the point where he needed medical help. In the evening, Otto and Gustav were gearing up for another prank on Eric. They called him over to their hangout spot and told him to clean up a big mess of dirty shoes that had piled up on the floor. Once again, Eric refused to follow their orders and stormed out. An annoyed Gustav turned to Otto and asked what they should do about Eric. But Otto didn't seem too bothered. He looked pretty laid back and suggested they cut Eric some slack since he was new. Eric spilled the beans to Pierre about everything. Pierre's face got all serious when he heard. He warned Eric not to defy Otto and Gustav anymore because anyone who did usually got punished. Eric, who used to be a tough guy, said he wasn't scared of them and insisted he wouldn't follow their orders. Later in the evening, Eric and Pierre brainstormed ways to deal with Otto and Gustav's bullying without resorting to violence. But it seemed tricky because most students preferred doing what Otto and Gustav said rather than ending up with bruises all over. The next day, Gustav accidentally bumped into Eric while they were both walking down the school corridor. Gustav told Eric to say sorry, but Eric refused because he thought he didn't bump into Gustav. It was Gustav who bumped into him by mistake. This made Gustav really mad, and he challenged Eric to a fight later that night at a specific spot. Eric got invited to the fight by Pierre and Johan, who explained that Otto and Gustav never fought fair. They'd round up their buddies and gang up on Eric. That night, Eric had initially planned to accept Gustav's challenge and brawl with him. But then he remembered what his mom had said about behaving well to graduate from school, so he decided against it. When he got back to his room, Pierre offered him a smoke to unwind. Over at the fight spot, Otto and Gustav had been waiting for Eric for quite a while. But when he never showed up, Otto thought Eric was too chicken and called him names, and his buddies cheered him on. 
The next day, Otto went ahead and called out the names of students who were always getting in trouble and not following the orders from the school's student organization. One of those names was Eric. When they were in the courtroom, Otto, who was the student council president, decided to punish Eric with a whole month of confinement. On top of that, Eric had to dig a one meter deep trench around the school area. Eric kept digging those trenches late into the evening, so he ended up eating alone in the dining hall after dinner. While Eric was having his solitary meal, a canteen worker named Marja came up to him. She seemed kinda interested in Eric and mentioned that he reminded her of her brother. Marja said that Eric's attitude reminded her of her brother's, how neither of them liked being pushed around. After dinner, Eric did his usual quick smoke. While he was puffing away alone, Marja suddenly showed up. She told Eric that smoking isn't good for his health and even talked about how his breath smelled. Then, out of the blue, she kissed him and gave him a tight hug. The thing is, both Eric and Marja knew the school had strict rules against students having romantic relationships with staff. The punishment was no joke. They'd both get expelled from school and Marja would lose her job. But that night, Eric and Marja didn't seem to care about the rules one bit. Christmas break rolled around and Eric headed home. His mom gave him a warm welcome, but his stepdad wasn't so pleased. Right away, his stepdad started asking why Eric had racked up so many punishments to the point of getting suspended. Eric didn't hold back, he told the truth. He explained that he disobeyed a student who turned out to be a noble and influential kid at school. His stepdad even chimed in, saying that nobles kids should be treated with respect and followed, because Eric's report cards were bad and he got into a lot of trouble at school. His stepdad decided to give him another caning. His mom, who understood her son's struggles, just let it be. After the Christmas break, Eric was back at school. He couldn't wait to see Marja because he'd really missed her. Eric and Marja finally got to be close again under the moonlight, letting go of their longing by being affectionate with each other. Knowing Eric had returned, Otto and Gustav came up with yet another plan to prank him. This time, they decided to throw dirt around while Eric was asleep. Their schemes always seemed to work. Eric and Pierre woke up right away and cleaned up their room, which was now covered in dirt. But Eric wasn't going to just let it slide. He was determined to get back at Otto and Gustav. He gathered up the leftover dirt and sneaked into Otto's room, tossing it around while Otto was fast asleep. The next day, during breakfast in the dining hall, Eric decided to make a scene. He loudly asked all the students if they smelled the awful stench. Then he started sniffing around, pretending to search for the source of the smell, until he finally stopped in front of Otto, who was eating his breakfast. Eric then declared to everyone that the foul odor was coming from Otto. This really ticked Otto off because Eric was openly making fun of him. Otto punched Eric in the face repeatedly, but Eric didn't fight back because he promised his mom he wouldn't. Marja, knowing this, quickly told Otto to stop. Since they couldn't bring Eric down, Otto and Gustav changed their target to Pierre, who was Eric's roommate and his only friend at the school. Otto called out Pierre while they were still in the dining hall, but Pierre refused because he felt he hadn't done anything wrong to Otto. Otto wasn't giving up though. He challenged Pierre to a fight after the last class, threatening to punish him if he didn't show up. Otto and Gustav were deliberately targeting Pierre to get under Eric's skin. Eric wouldn't just stand by while his best friend was bullied by Otto and his gang. After dealing with Pierre, they planned to go after Eric, making sure no students dared to defy them anymore. That evening, Pierre was left with no choice but to accept Otto's challenge. He showed up at the fight spot alone, while Otto and Gustav had their buddies with them. Pierre tried his best to stand up to Otto, but it was clear they were on different levels. With just a few light hits from Otto, Pierre ended up on the ground. Eric was nowhere to be found, even though his best friend was being mistreated by Otto and his gang. By the time Eric finally arrived, it was too late to do anything. He took Pierre to their room and tended to his injuries. Afterward, he let Pierre rest and left the room. Eric bumped into Marja, and they spent the night together. The next morning, Eric was worried about Pierre's condition, so he hurried back to their room. To his surprise, the room was empty and Pierre had already left. Pierre took his stuff with him, which hinted that he wouldn't be coming back to school. Pierre had left behind a letter, apologizing for his sudden departure. He said that Eric was a great friend and advised him not to give up. Pierre encouraged Eric to keep fighting against Otto and his goons' unfairness 
and to stand up against the injustices that often happened at the school. Eric stood up, revealing his true self. He was dead set on getting revenge on Otto and his gang for how they treated his friend and the other students. He found Gustav in the dining hall and challenged them to a showdown in the arena in an hour. All by himself, Eric faced off against Gustav and von Schenken, who seemed bigger and stronger. But these two troublemakers just talked tough and relied on their parents' status. Eric, who had a bit of a wild side himself, managed to take them down without breaking a sweat. After dealing with Gustav and von Schenken, Eric turned to a shocked Otto. Eric let Otto know that he was next on his list. But before giving Otto an answer, Eric went to the school kitchen to find Marja. A female worker told him that Marja had left the school because she'd been fired. She handed him a letter from Marja. Eric was crushed by Marja's sudden departure, just like he had been with Pierre. One of Otto's cronies spotted Eric receiving a letter from a female school employee and rushed to tell Otto. They stormed into Eric's room, ordering their buddies to search through Eric's stuff. Among the items they found was a letter from Marja. Otto read it and discovered the secret relationship between Eric and Marja. Naturally, Otto used the letter as evidence to get Eric kicked out of school. He wasted no time in showing the principal the proof of this serious rule-breaking. The principal called Eric and promptly expelled him without much thought, given the gravity of the offense involving Marja. Eric accepted his punishment gracefully, but he asked the principal to return the letter from Marja because it was the only memento he had of her. The principal refused and put it away in a drawer. Now that Eric had been expelled, he had nothing to lose and decided to take revenge on Otto for all the hardships he'd faced at Starnsburg. After all, he'd already been kicked out of school, so he had nothing holding him back. He tracked down Otto and found him walking alone in the woods. Eric confronted Otto and threatened him with a stick, making Otto kneel down. Surprisingly, Otto obeyed Eric's commands without hesitation. Otto was in a total panic. He offered Eric $10,000 to spare his life, but Eric turned him down. As Eric was getting ready to confront Otto, Otto broke down in tears, begging for mercy and even throwing up from fear. Eric held Otto's face and assured him he wouldn't kill him because he didn't share Otto's cruel ways of oppressing the weak. Eric went back to school to gather his things. He remembered what Gunnar had told him, that he could reach out if he had any problems at school. So, Eric called Gunnar, and not long after, the lawyer showed up at Starnsburg. Eric told Gunnar about his situation, and together they went to see the principal, who was having a drink with the teachers. Eric pleaded not to be expelled from school and asked for Marge's letter back. Initially, the principal refused, but then Gunnar entered the room and threatened to expose the case system and bullying among the students, as well as the principal's involvement. Faced with this, the principal had no choice but to grant all of Eric's requests and disband the student council led by Otto. In a nutshell, Eric is extremely thankful to Gunnar because he can go back to school and put an end to Otto and his gang's control. He enjoys peaceful days at school until his graduation day arrives. His mom is bursting with pride and joy over her son's accomplishments during his time at Scharnsburg. However, his stepfather is still unhappy because Eric keeps getting bad marks in his attitude evaluations at school. As his stepfather gears up to give him a beating, Eric stands up for himself and declares that there will be no more violence in their house. He kicks his stepfather out for good. Some time later, Eric finally reunites with Pierre, who's heading to Geneva for further education. They promise to meet again someday. And with that, the story comes to an end. So the moral of the story is if you want to make lasting friendships, always carry a spare stick to threaten your enemies with. But remember, it's all fun and games until someone throws up.